In other videos, we've already introduced the idea of an extraneous solution where you go about solving an equation. So you're given an original equation and you do a bunch of algebraic steps and then you solve it and you get some solutions. And what we've seen, especially when we're dealing with radical equations and especially some rational equations, sometimes the solu all of the solutions don't work for our original equation. And so the solutions that don't work, that don't work, these are the ones that we call extraneous. What we're going to do in this video is get a little bit deeper. We're going to look at some extraneous solutions, but really think deeply about why they show up. So let's just give an example, and this is one that hopefully you're familiar with, or at least the idea of it you're familiar with when you're dealing with radical equations. Let's say you're trying to solve 2x minus 1 is equal to the square root of 8 minus x. And I'm going to go quickly through it. If this is unfamiliar to you, I encourage you to review solving radical equations. But we're going to really study why we get an extraneous solution here. So actually, why don't you pause this video, figure out what the solutions are. I'll give you a hint. One of them is going to be extraneous. And really think about why that extraneous solution shows up. All right, now let's do it together. And just to go through the steps that we've seen before for radical equations. You want to square both sides of this. So if you square the left-hand side, you'll get 4x minus, 4x squared, I should say, minus 4x plus 1 is equal to, you square the square root of 8 minus x, you're going to get just 8 minus x. And now let's see, we can subtract 8 from both sides, and we can add x to both sides, so we just have 0 on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we're going to get 4x squared minus 3x minus 7 is equal to 0. So we have an interesting quadratic here. You could use a quadratic formula, but it looks like this one might be factorable by grouping. We just have to think of two numbers that when we add them, so a plus b needs to be equal to negative 3, and a times b needs to be equal to 4 times negative 7, needs to be equal to negative 28. And the obvious ones seem to be right in front of us. 4 and negative 7. 4 plus negative 7 is equal to negative 3. 4 times negative 7 is equal to negative 28. So we can just break this negative 3 up into, or negative 3x up, into a 4x and a negative 7x. So let me do that. So you have 4x squared. And then I'm just going to, and this is just factoring by grouping. Once again, if this is unfamiliar, I encourage you to review that on Khan Academy. So we're going to get plus 4x minus 7x. Notice these two add up to negative 3x. So I'm not changing the equation, really, or the value, or what it's trying to express, is equal to 0. And in factoring by grouping, we can group these two together. And then we can group these two together. And for these first two, we can factor out a 4x. And so you are going to get a 4x times x plus 1. And in the second two, we can factor out a negative 7, minus 7 times x plus 1. And all of that is going to be equal to 0. And then we can factor out an x plus 1. And so we're going to get x plus 1 times 4x minus 7. So times 4x minus 7 is equal to 0. And once again, this is just to get us to a place where we can look at what the solutions are. So we can see that either x plus 1 is going to be equal to 0, which happens when x is equal to negative 1, or 4x minus 7 is equal to 0, which happens when 4x is equal to 7, which happens when x is equal to 7 fourths. So we got these two solutions, and I promised you that one of them would be extraneous. So let's try this first one, x equals negative 1. And remember, when you, when you solve a radical equation like this, you want to substitute back in the original equation to see whether they're extraneous or not. So when you substitute x equals negative 1 back here, you're going to get 2 times negative 1 minus 1 is going to be equal to the square root of 8 minus negative 1. And so on the left-hand side, you have negative 2 minus 1. That is negative 3. And you get that equaling the square root of 9, the principal root of 9. And so you get this weird result that 3, negative 3 is equal to 3, which we know is not the case. And that's why we know this is extraneous. But as I promised, why did this happen? And the key is to realize that when you're doing algebraic manipulation, 
Some operations are reversible and some are not. For example, if you say that a plus b is equal to c and you want to solve for a and you subtract b from both sides, you are going to get a is equal to c minus b. And if you were to start off with a is equal to c minus b, you could add b to both sides. You could add b to both sides to get back to your original equation, to get a plus b is equal to c. So this adding and subtracting values from both sides, that is a reversible operation. You can do it in either, in either direction. But when you're squaring things, that is not true. And we did square right over here. Did we, to go from that first step to this step, we squared. And what we'll see, or what you might already recognize, is that squaring is not reversible. If I know that a is equal to b, and then I were to square it, we do know that a squared is equal to b squared. But if we go the other way around, if we know that a squared is equal to b squared, so if we know that a squared is equal to b squared, do we know that it's always the case that a is equal to b? Well, I'll give you an example that shows that that is not always true. We know that negative two squared is equal to two squared, but negative two is not equal to two. So that's what we did here. We squared at this step, and it's not reversible. And we were able to deduce a bunch of stuff, and then we got all the way to the point that's saying, okay, x is equal to negative one, or x is equal to seven fourths. But it's not always the case that when x equals negative one that we can reverse all the way back to this original equation and that two x minus one is equal to the square root of eight minus x. And the two places where this is important when you're dealing with algebra, the two obvious places, are when you're doing with radical equations, because you're doing that squaring step, and that squaring step is not reversible. The other case is when you are dealing with multiplying both sides by a variable. And to understand that, if we know that a is equal to b, but then we were to multiply both sides of this equation times x, and so we'll get x a is equal to x b, that could be true, but is the other way around necessarily true? If we know that x a is equal to x b, is it always the case that a is equal to b? Well, I'll give you an example where that isn't the case. What happens when x is equal to zero? We know that zero times three is equal to zero times four, but it is not the case that three is equal to four. And so this is another situation where multiplying both sides of an equation by a variable, you can go in that direction, but it's not necessarily reversible. You can't necessarily go back in that direction. And that's why when you solve an equation, oftentimes a rational equation, by multiplying both sides of that equation by a variable and you get a result, it's not necessarily true that you could take that result and reverse everything and get back to your original equation. And that's why you have to check your extraneous solutions, especially for radical equations, and especially when you do an algebraic operation like multiplying both sides of an equation by a variable or by an expression that involves a variable.